Thanks for joining me, Brahmas fans. This is Troy Pew, the official, unofficial, never superficial Texas Brahmas examiner, the place for everything Brahmas related. Remember to su subscribe to my articles at the top of the examiner.com website, and that website again is www.examiner.com slash Texas Brahmas dash N dash Fort dash Worth. Or you can just Google Texas Brahmas Examiner or follow my tweets at BrahmasExaminer.com. Joining me today is Brahmas D man Ross Ralu. Uh, Ross is the fourth Brahmin to sign with the team this upcoming 2011-2012 season. This, this Michigan native joined the team in 2008, and what a journey it has been from the beginning. Uh, why don't you take us back there and tell us how you came through the Making the Cup program. It wasn't easy. I came down from a Division three school and didn't know what to expect. I basically came down here because my brother signed. So it was just a chance to play with him for the first time, and I wanted to take that opportunity to get to play with him, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, i got to ask, uh, you, you mentioned your brother. I was going to ask you how a Michigan, a northern Michigan native, ended up at an open tryout for a Texas ice hockey team. I mean, you're coming from Michigan, yeah. the, the, the state of hockey, and you come down <laughs> to Texas to play. Yeah, I knew nothing about hockey down here. And <laughs> once he signed and it was a chance for us to get together for the first time, I had to come down here and give it a shot. So I got I got to ask as well. How great did that feel when you come down here to an open tryout from a, like you said a Division three school? You come down here through an open tryout, make the team, and that year that you're here, you end up being such a big part of a championship winning team. How how great was that? It was unbelievable, but it was a tough tough journey. Like I said, I got made it through making the cut. It was long hard days, training camp didn't get any easier, and then I end up getting cut after two games. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, so I got cut after two games, went home for three months, and then they called me back. So I was nervous, first two games, didn't really play anything like I can, and went home and just sat there and kind of thought about it. Once they called me back, I was just like, I'm just going to go down there and play and do what I can do to help the team, you know. Now, I do see as well that you did get called up to, you did get a call up to the Houston Arrows of the AHL. Uh, but like my stat sheet shows literally no stats for you with the with the Houston Arrows. Um, did they just call you up, or did you actually get to play with them at all? Yeah, well, I went up for that one game. They had they only had five D men, so I called up for a six D men, and I played a couple of shifts. It was more of a learning process, just seeing what it was all about. So, did you get that extra bonus? <laughs> <laughs> well, I made about as much in that game as I do weekly here. <laughs> Um, so you didn't you didn't go far from home to play collegiate hockey, did you? I mean, uh, Finlandia University was pretty much in your backyard, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. about a block away. <laughs> <laughs> now, going through playing Division three, then playing with uh, with the Brahmas and the CHL, then going up and like I said learning with the AHL. In your words, how would you how would you explain the different technique and positioning and, and everything from the skill level? Moving up from the moving up from the different levels, how would you explain the different techniques in playing defense as the as the skill level increases, the skill level increases, and all that? It just it gets faster every level. You just got to make quicker decisions. You don't have time to sit there and wait, and the guys, the guys get bigger as well. Right, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and that's one of the things that I, that it, as a coach, I, I helped coach a, a midget minor team. And, uh, I mean, these guys were only 16, but some of them were really good. And others where you were looking at going, well, are they going to make it? Are they going to make it at the next level? Because, like you said, the, the mindset, they weren't quick enough in making yeah. those decisions. They were good at what they did, but it was just you got to be quicker at making those decisions. Yeah. And, and that's what I was asking. Is it, is it different the way you position yourself as well, the different techniques, or is it just all in the, the reflex? Well, you just play the team system. However, they want you to play. They send two D-men hard and keep the center in front, or keep one D-men in front at all times. It's just whatever system they want to run. Now, how are you? Uh, how are you liking Dan Walthong's, uh system he's got here? Yeah, you know, it's good. It's fun. He uh, he demands hard work, and that's what everyone does. So, I'm going to ask you a couple personal here for your teammates. If you were GM for a day. Which guy? Which one guy would you sign from last year's team back onto this team? Chad Willard. Chad Willard. Yeah. 
not not because not only because he scored 46 goals, but he's been around the league. He's a smart player. He lets you know when you're doing wrong. He helps you out with what you need, and he's a good leader. All right. So uh, you know, there's a couple of fan favorite names, and you mentioned one of them, Chad Wooler. I'm gonna throw a couple of them at me, and uh, throw a couple of them at you, and you tell me what uh, what you think if they're coming back this year, and, and you know, and if you would want them back, and why. I see. We already talked about Chad Willard. Uh, what about Mike Scorey? Well, obviously, any team would want him back. He's a <laughs> monster out there, and he gives you a lot of extra room when he's on the ice. And yeah, he'd be a good one to bring back. But I don't think he's going to be making it. Uh, what about uh, Greg Hogaboom? Another great player. Unbelievable shot. He's a pure goal scorer, and I wish it'd be nice to have him back. And the last one I got here, the captain, Jason Deach. He's a good leader. Learned a lot from him, helped me out through the last three years, and obviously you always want your captain back. Right. And uh, I saw that they just uh, they just signed the the goaltender, Silverthorn. Yeah. Have you had a chance to see him play yet? No, I haven't seen him play. I met him the other day at the apartments for five minutes, and that was about it. But I'm excited to get on the ice and see him play. He's, he's put up a lot of good numbers in his career. So the next topic I want to go into is you moved down here in, in the 2007-2008, uh, right? Yeah. You've witnessed a, a little bit of the growth of hockey in Texas. It is a growing sport here. Now, how much do you know about what happened in, during last year's high school hockey playoffs between Arlington Martin and Keller ISD? I'm not, I'm not really familiar with it. Basically, what happened was, you know, you've got two high school teams, Arlington Martin and Keller. They went in. Arlington Martin had a little bit of reputation of being a cheap shot team. Yeah. Oh, this is where they start fighting. Right. There was a huge fight. brawl yeah. on the, on the yeah. ice. The guy came out of the penalty box and just cheap shot elbowed this other kid in the head. I mean, it was really just a whole bunch of cheap shots. Um, personal opinion, after watching some of it, the refs didn't have control of the game. The coaches weren't doing their job, obviously. Yeah. Um, but how do you think that that really affected the growth of the sport in this whenever that was going? I mean, I've got a guy up in Maine who heard about this. Yeah. So it was nationwide at coverage, and that really makes Texas hockey look bad. How, did you, how bad do you think that affected us, and what we, can we do to kind of get that, that back? I, I don't think it really affects the growth of the game. The kids are still going to want to play and everything. I just think that the refs need to, like you said, take control right off the bat. They need to make harsher penalties for cheap shots and there was make like, kids sit out for games and stuff like that. There know? was like 200 and something combined total yeah. penalty minutes for that game. That's just ridiculous. Let's see if he, if the refs do it right off the bat, the kids aren't going to do it. You know, they're not going to sit in the box all game. Right. And if you're going to go and elbow somebody, make them sit two, three games. Now, in the, speaking of that, you know, the. Uh, the coach of Arlington Martin, he was kicked out. Arlington Martin High School actually said, since it's not UL sponsored here, Arlington Martin High School said, you can't use our name anymore. So what they ended up doing was they combined Arlington, the other Arlington High School teams, the Arlington Wild was what they were called, with the Arlington Martin team, they just combined them. And I actually had a chance to coach with the, the head coach of what is now the whole Arlington system. His name is Greg Snetsinger, and I know if anybody can teach these kids how to play non-punk hockey in his exact words, he'd be able to do it. Um, so, I mean, we've got – it'll be good there. Um, any words that you would like to give to those kids out there that are playing this game? Any words of advice? Just have fun. It's, that's what it's all about in the long run, even at this level. It's, if you're not having fun, you shouldn't be out there. That's right. Uh, looking at your stats sheet here. Don't do that. <laughs> it's not bad at all. <laughs> it's, it's not bad at all. I mean, you got uh, the first year. The first year you were here, you played 17 games, and uh, stats show you had uh, 17 games, 10 penalty minutes. <laughs> not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. And then your se your second year here, you had you played 60 games, had four goals, 14 assists. 72 penalty minutes, and, and you uh, 
He played eight playoff games, had four points during the uh, the playoffs. And then last year you had you played 59 games, two goals, 11 assists, and four games in the playoffs. It's not not bad numbers for somebody coming out. Like I said coming up through the uh, the open tryouts to be able to come onto the Brahmas, make that big of an impact on the championship winning team, get called up to the Houston Arrows. Uh, it's really impressive. It really is. And I got a I got a quote here from from your coach Dan Walfong. He, he says uh, Ross has grown so much as a player in the past three seasons, and we expect big things from him this season. He knows the system and has experienced what it takes to bring home the cup. So that's a little bit of encouragement from your coach there. Yeah. Well, that first year for me was big. I came in and there was just great guys on the team: uh, Craig Menard and Kevin McLeod and Mike Belinga. A lot of other guys, but them guys really took me under their wing and showed me what pro hockey was all about. Now, I also have uh, have here the uh, this year's Making the Cup program is going to be looks like uh, September 23rd through 25th for individuals that uh, think they got what it takes to play in the CHL. Um, they're going to be giving out two 2011 CHL training camp contracts this, this year. And uh, it'll kick off actually Thursday, September 22nd at 7 p.m. with a mandatory meeting at the NITEC Sports Center here in North Richland Hills. Uh, players report to the ice on Friday with an 8 a.m. practice to showcase their skills to the coaches. Uh, applicants must be, 20, must be 18 years old excuse me, or older to attend the camp. Uh, they also must make their own travel and lodging accommodations, and the price for the prospect camp is $200. And who knows, if you come out, pay your $200, you might uh, end up like uh, Ross Rollo here and uh, actually make it on and be a part of a championship winning team. How great would that be? <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure, Ross. Hey, I appreciate awesome. you taking the time. Yeah, make me sound good on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, I'll do what I can. And it's Rulo.